I've noticed while testing out features that there's a pretty big delay between me moving in front of the robot and it noticing and reacting to that move. So in today's developer log, I'm going to pick his tiny brain apart piece by piece in the hopes that when I'm done, I'll have some idea of how to make him faster. Now the best way I can think of to test the speed of his reaction time is to point him at the monitor, remote connect to his operating system and then run the app with preview mode enabled. That way I can make a change to the desktop and see how long it takes for that change to show in the preview. Make sense? Great. First I need to do a baseline test. How long does it take without any changes at all? So to figure that out I just need to run the app, move this window out of view and see how long it takes before the robot sees that happening. Okay, that's not fast. Let's do some more testing and build a spreadsheet because nothing's more fun than watching someone make spreadsheets on YouTube. For the baseline, we're looking at around 3.5 seconds delay. Not good. So let's keep going. I want to work out whether the bottleneck is in the image recognition or something else in the application. That's an easy one to test. All we need to do is take out all the other features and test again. This time we're a little faster, but not by much. What's next? Well, the app runs a loop and uses PubSub to trigger different behaviors at different times. Let's see if that's the problem by disabling that and just calling the tracking source directly. Well, there's a minor improvement there, but not enough to make a big difference. So what's next? This code works using OpenCV, but I've heard that TensorFlow Lite is another good alternative. There are a ton of examples available and the performance is supposed to be good, so let's run a test script. Now full disclosure, this isn't a like for like test. The script is running independent of my app and it's running basic object detection rather than facial recognition, but it should be close enough to see whether there's a significant difference. Two seconds, not bad. Definitely getting closer to what I want. Before we move on, I have one more test in the app to run and that's to remove the facial detection code altogether. This way I can see how much of a delay that causes by itself. So I re-enable all the other changes and take out the detection code. Well, that's a big difference. Great news, except that now it won't do anything with the image. So where do we go from here? I noticed when I tested TensorFlow that there's a slightly different approach to retrieving frames. Rather than doing that directly, there is a thread running that constantly retrieves frames. And the main method just references the latest frame. So let's see what difference that makes. Also, I want to see if I can thread the tracking method in a loop so that we can see what a run that uses all the resources on the Pi would do to performance. So let's take a look at this change. We're going to wrap the vision stream in its own class and start a thread that loops over the code to get the frames. Then we'll call the reference to the current frame from the vision class. Easy as that. Let's take a look and see how it goes. Well, that looks much better than the baseline gone from three and a half seconds down to about one and a third, including the other features in the app as well. And that's less than half a second slower than with the facial detection algorithm disabled altogether. Now I'm interested to see if instead of using a loop and pub sub to trigger each call, we can just thread it. So we're going to add the option to thread all the tracking code. This should push the CPU usage up to the maximum, but let's see how it affects performance. At first glance, it doesn't look like there's much of a difference. Let's run this a few times and then compare. So these are the final results. If we thread the tracking code, we do see an improvement over using the loop, but it's actually only a fraction of a second and the CPU usage goes up quite a lot. Not exactly what I expected. So what does this all mean? I think I'm going to include both options in the code with a toggle to disable the resource heavy threading. And by default on my version, I think I'll leave it disabled because it really doesn't seem worth the extra resource usage. I might look at adding TensorFlow in a future change, but for now, an improvement of over two seconds means the response time is near enough 
to real time for what I need. If you're interested in improving the speed further and you have some money to spend, there's also the Coral USB Accelerator, which is hardware specifically designed to improve the performance of TensorFlow. I'll definitely take a look at that in the future as well. That's everything for now. If you want to see more about this project, take a look at the playlist in the description. See you next time.